Yeah, it does. Oh, look. Another Raspberry Pi shaped single board computer. It's got a clock battery, GPIO, Wi Fi, NVMe, micro HDMI, a headphone jack, USB 3, plus a whole fear ether noodle. And the special bit Intel 100 goodness. Neat. Now, I should probably say heat instead of neat, because in order to use the X4, you're going to need this heatsink slash test bench. I'm not calling it a case. Mine came with a super thick thermal pad. That's not going to work unless we peel off both of the sides. And it's really good time to talk about the dangers of review samples because Rasta probably gave this one a really good once over before sending it my way. And I need to bring that up since people have reported issues with the thermal pad being too thin, too brittle, or both. And that's something you need to be on the lookout for. Now we need to plug in the fan. It's as simple as removing the heatsink, plugging it in, and reinstalling the heatsink, all because of this frighteningly short power cable. For storage, I'm using an OEM Micron drive because cheap. And now to secure the test bench legs with six screws. Oh, and I can't forget the feats. And when it comes to power, the X4 can suck down 27 watts. So I'm going to err on the side of overkill here. Canakit makes this 45 watt chonker, and it's kind of my go-to for anything Pi 4 and above. Links to all this stuff in the video description. Let's get it plugged in and see if it knows how to Linux. In this delightfully vintage BIOS, we get a clock. Options for CPU, ACPI, network, NVMe, and more. Plus the ability to save. What more could you ask for? One of the advantages of the Rust X4 being x86-64 is versatility. It can run a wide range of operating systems, including BSD, Windows NT, Haiku OS, and FreeDOS. However, I'm going to be using Debian 12 as a benchmark, assuming that, hey, if it can handle Debian, it should be able to run any other operating system you're going to throw at it. Under load, the X4 is a thirsty SBC pulling 13 watts at the mains. That said, at idle, the X4 sips just under 7 watts. Sips might not be the right word considering my Raspberry Pi 4 uses 4 watts, but that's 5 watts less than the HP Elite Desk 705G4 Mini. Out of the box, Wi-Fi on the X4 is non-existent. We can sort that by installing the Realtek firmware and giving it a reboot. Hey, there they are. That was relatively painless. Up next, we have EtherNoodles. This is a 2.5 gig port, and that means I need to downgrade my network with this 10 gig to 2.5 gig transceiver. Let's try a synthetic test using iPerf3, and yeah, we're doing two-ish on the send and receive. And in the real world, I'm getting just under two gigabits a second while slinging this 13 gigabyte file over the network. Want to see a magic trick? Wake on LAN lets you power on a PC over the network. We can check if the X4 supports it with EtherTool. You see that wake on equals G? Means we're good to go. But let's make a wake on LAN service, plug in our adapter digits, and enable it. Then back in the BIOS, go to Advanced, ACPI, and enable Wake Up by PCIe LAN. Now we can send a magic packet from a remote PC or application to the MAC address on the X4 and ta da! Geekbench is an application that generates numbers based on a computer's hardware. Higher usually means better, and oh boy. The X4 dances all over the face of both the Pi 4 and 5 in both single and multi-threaded workloads. While I'm not an expert on storage benchmarking, I did run KDiskMark using the real-world performance profile. And I'm going to go out on a short, sturdy limb and say that the performance is acceptable for an $80 single-board computer using a $20 drive. Using the default settings, the N100 will boost to 3 plus gigahertz on all cores for about a second, sometimes two. Then Intel speed shift kicks in. Yo, let's try that again with a fan unplug. Same behavior, but with a 10C increase in temps. Still nowhere near the max operating temperature of 105C. So it is throttling, but by design, not because of thermals. And I'm not going to tell you that there's settings in your BIOS that change this behavior. The spec sheets say that the X4 can output 4K60, and yep, that looks like 60 FPS to me. That means we should be able to load up a 4K60 video, and oof, that looks closer to 4K13. Let's enable hardware acceleration and MPV, and hey, there we go, much better. 
Now we're going to stream the same video from the X4 to another PC using Jellyfin. The X4 has no problem sending the 4K video over the network, but let's see what happens when we try to bust it down to 720p. Transcoding pushes all four cores to 80% and I'm seeing the occasional hiccup in the playback. Let's see if enabling VAPI hardware acceleration sorts that. Oh, much better. One core 30% while the other three are just kind of rounding errors. And if we look at Intel GPU top, we can see the compute bits are hard at work. For a quick test of the Bluetooth, I'm going to use Blue Man Manager to search for devices. It sees my DualShock controller, pairs right up, and connects. That's the good kind of boring. If we're doing the can it run crisis joke, let's give it a 2007 resolution. At 1024 by 768 with the graphical settings on meh, the X4 delivers a very consistent 20-ish frames per second with the occasional dip, well, kinda into the teens. Still impressive, but we can get a solid FPS gaming experience in Hollow Knight by cutting everything down to low. Hmm, and knocking the resolution down to 720p? Yeah, there it goes. Nailed it. Truly a gaming powerhouse. As you might expect, Blender plays nice with the integrated graphics on the N100. I can spin this penguin with great vengeance and furious anger. Just don't expect hardware accelerated rendering. But what about DaVinci Resolve? No. Now I did have better luck using the X4 with the best digital audio workstation with a scythe in the logo. We're talking about Reaper. Now granted, I did have to get a bit medieval with the configuration and I ended up using Jack instead of we have Jack at home. The X4 was able to play 10 minutes from the session used to record my podcast without generating X runs, meaning the X4 would make a solid digital audio workstation if it could just shut the f*** up. This 5 volt 4000 RPM QD only has one setting. Loud. At idle or under full load, you will always be greeted by the dulcet tones of You don't want that on your desktop and it's still going to bug you on the opposite side of the room. But whatever you do, please don't unplug it. This is a hot cup of tea. I can touch the mug. I can even poke my fingers in for a little bit. For comparison, I left this fan unplugged for about 30 minutes to check the idle temp. And the heat sink got so hot that I couldn't pick it up. So keep this guy plugged in or find a better cooling solution. The X4 comes with a Raspberry Pi 2040 microcontroller that shows up on your desktop when you press this button. I was able to install CircuitPython, at least I think I did. Genuinely have no idea what I'm doing here. And holding down the button will undo whatever nonsense you were previously up to. If you jumped to this part of the video because you already bought an X4 and you're looking for that sweet confirmation bias, well, let's take a look at the P3 ITA rating. A Raspberry Pi is the keystone of SBCs, and it sits square in the middle. It's small, it's fast-ish, it's cheap-ish. Then we have things like this Banana Pi R4. It's not cheap, it's not fast, it's not small, but it's got dual 10 gig fiber and Wi-Fi 7, you know, hot but crazy. But way back over here, we have the 705. It's fast, it's cheap, but it's not small. The X4, it's a little above the 705. It's fast, it's cheap, and it's small. It can run Windows 11, Linux, BSD, basically anything you want to throw at it. It's like a Raspberry Pi on methamphetamines. The methamphetamine part is in reference to this metallic block of nope that you need to order to access the awesomeness inside of the X4, starting with this cord. It's an extremely tight fit, causing the wires to rub against pointy metal. Now, given enough time, that's going to end predictably. Also, this fan is always running at 4,000 RPMs, making it too shouty for a desktop or home theater PC. What the X4 needs is a proper case heatsink combo with a PWM fan, like this Argon 1. And until Rasta or a third party makes one, sales the X4 is going to be limited to enthusiasts that don't mind a shouty open air test bench containing a pie sized x86 SBC. The X4 is basically the SBC equivalent of a hot rod. And that said, at 130 bucks all in, it's a really tempting hot rod. All right, that's my hot take. After a month of poking and prodding this critter, let me know yours down in the comments. And if you have any Linuxy questions, drop them in the forums on Interfacing Linux, where you can find the full write-up for this video along with several others. 
Now, get out there and poke something with your Linux sticks. Except maybe, you know, this fan. <laughs>